Awesome. Great. Thanks for being here, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Luisa, thanks for joining. Um, so let's see what we have today. We also have a uh, attorney, Maria uh, Primushko. She is a state planning uh, specialist, and we're going to hear more from her <coughs> about uh, some aspects. She did a class not long ago, um, like a hybrid class in Calabasas and over Zoom, but uh, we have more questions for her and things that you can, you can ask and always better exposure during team meetings. So um, more of you can ask better questions. So thanks for joining. And if you're here at the uh, Western office today, we have a chili cook-off afterwards. Uh, looking forward to that, right? And whoever's gonna win the $50 gift card. <coughs> a few options out there. Um, okay, we'll talk about that offices in a second too. See what they're, uh, what they're up to. So let's see, let's see. <clears throat> Holly, lead the way. You will either step forward into growth or you will step back into safety. Abraham Maslow. Let's take a second to digest that, right? And you wanna give us uh, your own definition of what it is? Yeah, well, I mean, to me, when I hear this, I think of the fact that growth means uncomfortability. It could mean instability, you know. Stepping back makes us feel safe. It makes us feel warm. Yet when we have that feeling, we're never going to be able to reach our true potential and push ourselves to the limits that we may not even know that we have. Right. So that's what I kind of think of. You either step forward into that growth or you step back into feeling and not growing to feeling comfortable. Yeah, I mean, uh, we all want to find that uh, sweet spot of safety and security. But if you're really a risk taker and leaning towards growth, <clears throat> aka risk, it's sometimes a place of the unknown and it won't feel as safe and comfortable all the time. I just have to take the risk. So uh, well said, Holly Wright. <laughs> Uh, shout outs to uh, our agents from the various offices, Start, starting off with um, Calabasas. Um, and uh, she just she got 10 more steps in. Stephanie. Hi, here. All right, Christina and Ed. Congratulations Woo! on getting to 100%. They texted me immediately and said, guess what? So their first time capping at, um, you know, they're new to our office here this year. And so they capped in their first year. So you guys are awesome. Love you. Congrats, uh, beautiful people. Um, always with the, the right and positive attitude. Uh, used to be for years uh, with different, com different companies and then landed in Calabasas <clears throat> uh, not long ago and the, the crushing it. So proud of you guys. Uh, keep up the, the smile and the attitude. <clears throat> Congratulations. And Mark. Mark Garbell. Awesome, awesome. So you're at the 100% as well. So congratulations to you. You know, uh, proud of you as always and enjoy your extra money. Mark is uh, out of the Calabasas office, uh, caps every year since he also joined us years in the industry. Uh, well done, Mark. Keep it up. Keep it up. And Allison Silverman. Allison, girl, what can I say? Congratulations on capping. You deserve it. You knock it out of the park, and I love your new pick. Woohoo! <laughs> so, congratulations, Allison. Congrats as well. Um, sent it every year. She hit the cap, and, and uh, she, she doesn't stop no matter what. Okay. We, we do. Oh, uh, Adi Mizrahi, Adi, congratulations. Adi, you are crushing it this year. Oh my goodness. I love seeing all the reports. So congratulations on getting your 100%. Keep doing it. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, Adi is a commercial, uh, is a hybrid commercial residential, mostly commercial agent as well. So congrats, Adi. Keep it up. Keep it up. Uh, and and uh, we don't have it on the slide. <clears throat> Just give her a, a shout out. Uh, to Josepha Elperin from the Calabasas office. We're going to have on the slide next uh, uh, next meeting. 
Uh, Josepha, congrats as well. She's been in the office yeah. for many, many years. Keep it up. And on the west side, Ashley. Ashley, congrats. She's out here today. Uh, she, she is a neuro agent uh, working with, uh, with Lena out of the west side office. She's, she's just crushing it. First year in business, uh, uh, you know, capped as well. Um, you think she's gonna make the rookie job? <laughs> Ashley, congrats! Well done, well done. And she she actually reset uh, this month, and she already have a new one in Esco as well. So well done. And Long Beach, congrats, Donna. Donna. Yeah, congrats, Donna, on capping. I know you worked very hard on this. Uh, yes, Donna's a very special person and she really helps a lot with the culture of the office here. You guys, you, I'm sure you all know Donna. So Donna, congrats to your success. We're very proud of you. Well done, everybody. 100% commission and joy. And uh, I mean, th this year, I think we had uh, uh, for sure record-breaking uh, number of cappers with all the offices. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, we're gonna to get to that as well at some point. Uh, how did the top producers of uh, September? Congratulations, Long Beach. Long Beach. Sorry, I was muted. I was sitting here talking. Couldn't you guys hear me? Uh, <laughs> great, so congrats everybody to September was amazing. It was our second highest closest company dollar yet that we've ever brought in for the company. And we talked about that a little bit at our last meeting, but it's all because of you guys in your production. Look at all the names on the list. I'm not going to read them off, but congrats to everyone that closed a, uh, closed a sale in September. Keep up the hard work, stay focused. A lot of you guys have good stuff in the pipeline. Remember, that's going to fuel and feed your business for the next three to four months. So keep it up. Good job, uh, Team Long Beach. Uh, commercial and residential. Um, amazing work. Calabasas. <clears throat> Stephanie is at the back over there. I think she's trying to get the hold of the, or a sticker. Um, great month, Calabasas, crushing it. Um, keep it up. Commercial, residential. Stephanie, want to say something? Yes. <laughs> Happy Wednesday is what I want to say. Okay, September closing. I mean, okay, look it. Does it speak for itself? All the all the amazing agents that are out there to continuing to crush it. So Calabasas, so so proud of you guys and just you know just making this year be a banner year for the Calabasas office. So thank you to all of you. Good job, Calabasas team. In um, West Side, West Side, the guys. Commercial residential as well. Um, great, great month of September, and uh, looking even into a better uh, month of October. So just keep it up, guys. Uh, keep it up the, the pace. Some of you guys are over here in the crowd. Congrats, guys. Good job. And welcome to our offices. <clears throat> uh, since last meeting, uh, to the West the Office, Johannes, Moshe, Mo, uh, Federico, Edwin, John Teen, and Nitya. Welcome to the team, to the West the Office. Calabasas. <laughs> Woohoo! Calabasas is back. All right. We have Marjorie and, excuse me. <laughs> Melissa Wallace, Ash, Brenda, Brenda, Renata. So, who she just wrote an offer yesterday. So, just crushing it already with the with the new people coming on board. So, welcome, welcome. And Long Beach. Yeah, Long Beach. We grew by a lot this last month. I'm really excited to be in business with these people. Welcome, Michael, Manny, who's here. Hey, Manny. Yep, we have Irina. Welcome home, Irina. Erica, who joined the green team. Dee, he's over there. Hi, Dee. Awesome. Uh, Andrea, and then George Carson. So congrats, you guys. I'm really excited to be in business with you. We're happy to welcome you to the Forward Living family. Uh, cheers, and, and look forward to what the next couple months are going to bring. Good job, everybody. Welcome, and uh, congratulations. Uh, joining our, our teams 
and uh, keep expanding the uh, KW family. Um, <clears throat> let's go to Rich. Rich, what do you have for us? Well, uh, good morning, everyone. I first want to say thank you for all of you with SRAR members who voted for me. Um, I, I was elected back in, onto the board for two more years. And thank you for your support. I, I really couldn't have done it without you. And I, I really appreciate it. And Philip is joining us. And that's, that's great. I mean, Philip is a great uh, addition to our, to our board of directors directors so thank you thank you thank you um last week was car meetings there really wasn't that much that they did uh, concentrated on in regards to action items that would affect us in the in the industry um there was just a big dispute about what to do with their building but um but uh so there wasn't really much to report there um, I do want to say that uh, I'm teaching a class later today at four o'clock. It's about cybersecurity. Um, I was in one meeting and, and there, was, there was a great uh, speaker from a title company that um, I, I commandeered her, uh, her slides and I, I'm gonna present it to you because it, it's great information that you really need to know about uh, cybersecurity. So join me at four and I'll, I'll give it back to you, Manny. Thanks, Rich. Uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna ask you a few more questions. Sure. About the, sli the slides. Uh, uh, and uh, we're gonna mention the cybersecurity too, which is a great session for sure. You guys all should attend uh, this. And if not, we're gonna record this <laughs> in case you missed it. But uh, do you also mind mentioning, uh, I know that um, you know we have the, the new contracts, right? Uh, come and play uh, very soon, and we're gonna have a series of you know different uh, classes. Uh, and, and when you say contract changing, it's not like they change the whole contract completely. It's different modifications, which make it you know at times even more complicated to know where the changes are. But uh, we're gonna have a few sessions, Rich. Right? Yes, I, I know that Jeff Khan is gonna be teaching some some of them, and I'll let Jeff teach it first, and then and then yeah. uh, I'll teach it. Uh, I'll teach it several times. I mean, well, uh, the the change doesn't happen until, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, probably mid December. It will definitely happen in December, but they they anticipate mid December. I think agents. I've already taken one class by Gov Hutchinson, and um, I think that agents are going to like the changes. I like the changes. Um, everything. The terms of the contract are right up front. That's where you, um, they're not all over the place and uh, the rest of the, the contract is just ex explanations of, of the terms. So I think, it, I think there are good changes and um, we're going to like them. One great change is for those of you who are dealing with trusts or probates, um, you don't have to do a representative capacity. It's incorporated into the um, into the contract, so that's a great change um, because that was really confusing. So, um, but I, I think everybody's going to like it. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the uh, our uh, speaker in the meeting. Sure. Hey, uh, um, St Stephanie, make sure to text her the right link for the meeting. Thank you. Go ahead, Rich. No, I was going to try to fill time while you were trying to do that, but I couldn't think of anything to say. <laughs> uh, Rich, yes? I've got a question. Yeah, I've got a question. So a lot of people are asking where they could find a copy or a sample copy of the RPA. That's not available yet, correct? It isn't available, but there is, I think there is a redlined version of the contract uh somewhere on car's site uh um uh i think if you look i'll look for it during the meeting and then if i find it then i'll post it in, in the in the thing sometimes they do have a red line version uh but sample versions no if you're taking I've, I've gotten this question a lot for those of those who have signed up for classes you'll get a sample of the contract sent to you prior to the class i know that jeff We'll do that and and whatnot. <clears throat> and <clears throat> there's going to be this one change kind of triggers twenty to thirty other 
forms that are changing. Um, it, it's uh, so there will be a big um, update uh, coming December. Um, so just be aware of that. All right, thanks, Rich, and congrats again. Uh, Thank you. Uh, from, our, um, from our office, we have uh, Dan Seidel, Seidel, who's the you know this year's uh, president. She's going to be, you know, going to stay uh, serving uh, in different capacity. And of course, we have both Rich Pisani, uh, going to continue on the board for two years, and Philip, <coughs> new board member. Congratulations. Um, okay, great. So now up next we have. Uh, uh, Maria, attorney Maria uh, Primushko. Maria, can you hear us? Yes. Hello, everybody. Maria Primushko. Hi. Hi. I apologize for a little delay. Oh no, you, you're you right on time. We 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 had uh, Rich uh, talking extra point pointer, so it's, it's it worked out. <laughs> All right. So I see we have a large crowd today. Because uh, last uh, last week I gave presentation at your Calabasas office. By the way. Um, my compliments, the remodeling is superb. I love the office, very good. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure how many people saw me last uh, week uh, where we spoke about various, uh, how uh, people can uh, own title to the properties. Uh, yeah, so, so I, I would love for you to go over a few things. And by the way, whoever is watching us, this is a, this is a panel setting, so, <clears throat> on the chat, tap in your questions, tap in your questions, okay? Um, just to make it kind of more of a flowing meeting versus uh, a, a dialogue. So it's gonna be, we're gonna, you know, we, we still have, you know, limited time, but we'd love for you, Maria, just to go over, you know, the, 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 the basics of it, right? Uh, this is a much bigger crowd for sure. Um, or I, I know that a lot of people have questions, always come, come up with questions regarding trusts, right? how to hold trust, how to form trust, um, and also what the trust capacity can do. Can the trust hold or own a, a, a state of some kind? It'll, it'll see, is it, so what are the benefits? Of course. Uh, okay, so my name is Maria Premushko. I'm attorney and founder of MVP Law Group and been practicing estate planning for the past five years, but always had huge interest in it. I, I have passion about estate planning because estate planning helps people be in control. So it's you who decide who will take care of your, you, should you become incapacitated and what will happen to your property, to your business, to any types of assets that you own in case you become, you pass away. And so basically you control who on what terms will receive the inheritance. And that saves people from uh, creating a living trust. One of the tools uh, for estate planning uh, is a living revocable trust. Uh, sometimes people think estate plan planning, they call me and ask me to sell or, or help them purchase a property because real estate, estate planning, interchangeable, so people get confused. And uh, people know very little about the necessity of proactive and proper estate planning. So today I'm gonna talk to you as professionals, as uh, real estate agents or brokers, because uh, you, uh, you, you you engage uh, with people a lot. So you, while uh, in process of buying or selling property for a client, you get in touch with families, you get to know them, you become their trusted advisor. Anytime I talk to any professional that would be like a real estate agent, insurance agent, uh, any other professional, you have to be that person for the family that you touch for that client you you have to be the first point of contact for any needs they have that way next year in three years you will be the one who they call for another sale of the property or if they, they want to do anything related to their property and that's how they refer you further on to their uh, friends and family because they know that you're always there that you're not there just for one time deal to sell the property or to purchase a property and uh, collect your fees and be gone from their lives. You're there to stay. I always encourage people to touch base with their clients for at least four times a, a year. And one of these um, uh, 
ways to ensure that you care, to show people that you care, is that whenever you uh, uh, at the probably the finishing stages, at, at sometime during the escrow, when everyone is kind of uh, settled, we're almost certain that the deal will go through. You ask them questions. You already know people. Uh, ask them question. Uh, do you have a living trust? Uh, and if they say no, we don't, uh, or they say yes, it depends. Uh, the the follow-up questions are if it's current, if you're happy with it, do you know what's going to happen? Should some uh, should, should you become in in in, in um, disabled or should you pass away? Because it if when we create a living trust, the bottom line, we want to avoid the probate process. Probate court is part of the judicial system that handles uh, inheritance and uh, when people become disabled. Any trip to courthouse is very expensive. So if somebody passes away without having proper living trust or any type of trust, we can discuss it further. There's uh, several types. The other, the, 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 the heirs, they have to petition court and open probate. That process takes about two years here in Los Angeles County. And the fees that people pay, the expenses, it takes 25 to 35% out of the whole estate to pay for various kinds of fees. So you can, you can explain it to people and show your, um, that you care by, suggesting that they should talk to some professional and inquire a look into this issue about creating the estate plan because sometimes you see you, you you see the families it could be blended family they have children from various uh, from previous relationship they can have a child who has special needs uh, they can have a child who who is who has other problems such as um, problems with law maybe or just um, not responsible with money because you spend a lot of time talking to people and you get to know them a lot. That way, you are the professional. You are the trusted advisors. They already built the relationship with you, so they know they they can trust you. So you can suggest the uh, these types of uh, it, so. I found people say it's I'm uncomfortable. How am, am I going to tell people, hey, you have to have your living trust. But I, I believe at that stage of your relationship with your client, you already should feel comfortable talking about various uh, kinds of situations. I'm sure people discuss people, uh, kids with you, marriages, parents, etc. So you know a lot about them. So that's Creating a living, what is living uh, estate planning? Estate planning is a like, set of various uh, legal rules and tools that help people to plan their affairs. So people are in power. They know should something happen to them, uh, if they become incapacitated, that they know who will take care of their business. They know who will take care of their children. They know what will happen to their uh, assets in general because you appoint the person that you trust and you, 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 you're not relying on some uh, judge or clerk that you don't know, basically uh, being able to put a mug on your file and decide who will take care of your kid. It could be your uh, you know, brother-in-law who you do not trust at all, who, who goes parties every day, but court may give them custody without having your instructions. Any questions so far? Because I wanted to make it more of a discussion, more of the conversation. Maybe somebody uh, had, uh, you know, uh, the, um, uh, you know, client who had a trust and you didn't know what to do with it. I'm sure, uh, especially during the uh, when you you sell the property, you see that people sell the property on the deed. It says that uh, Jane and John Doe as trustees of this trust sell the property to your clients now, right? Uh, so here is a good example. You can say, hey, see, you, you, the, the, the sellers had a trust. Maybe it's a good idea for you to also make sure that your family is protected, uh, that nothing bad's gonna happen. So no questions so far, I can't believe it. What, what, one question now in the chat is, what is the typical fee for a basic living trust with a couple owning a home? Uh, couple? Let's uh, take our general couple, like a husband, wife, uh, two minor children. Uh, that trust would be uh, $3,000. 
but everything included. And um, I'm, I've been reviewing trust. You, you, they can do trust for much cheaper. I mean, if you go to legalzoom.com, you can create a trust for $600. But uh, yeah, it's, I would not recommend it. It's as if, uh, would you recommend your uh, client uh, to buy or sell property themselves, uh, you know, by on, on their own? Because no, they need you because you know, know how to navigate all these forms, how to properly enter the escrow, how to negotiate and everything. So that's the same, uh, the same thing. Let me show you. Um, the example so uh this is the trust we're talking about the document so it's uh it's quite a i'm sorry oh, doesn't want to so it, it it is for a couple um and they had a lot of uh, assets that's why it's a little big uh more uh, larger than usual and in that that package includes a living trust uh poor will power of attorney healthcare directive HIPAA forms for, 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 for both. So basically this document includes everything that you need to run your life. And it's uh, uh, any, any, anyone coming after you, they have to open the book and everything is there. Your decisions are there. So who takes care of kids, who takes care of me, who takes care about, of my finances, et cetera. Uh, because um, um, yeah, so 3000, that's including, I don't charge anything me personally, uh, anything for phone calls, emails, notaries included, uh, and one house transfer of title. I do not trust my my clients. That's why I do title transfers myself. Uh, so because uh, because creating the trust, signing the trust is one thing. It's uh, the first thing. It's good to do, but there is another step called funding where we have to make sure that we transfer title to all assets that we own into the name of the trust. Yeah, and sure. unfortunately, uh, I've seen a lot of times when people overlook that or their attorneys told them to do so, they have never uh, finalized the process. That's why I do it myself for them. I supervise that. No, that's a, that, that, that's a great note, by the way, because <clears throat> that, that's where the, uh, that's the loopholes, right? Like people think, oh, I, I, I got it done and whatever. Uh, if they did, you know, by themselves or through an attorney, but they didn't really close all the loop. We really have to to know um, the whole, you know, the whole cycle of it, not just like from one point of view. Of course, because uh, for example, right now I have two case uh, cases in probate where people came in with these nice binders and they're thinking that they had a trust, and so their parents uh, passed away. They had a trust, everything's good. But I check, do the title search. And I see that the property is not in the name of the trust and uh, um, never yeah. mentioned in the trust document. So we have to go through full blown probate. Yeah. And as, a, as an attorney, I make much more money during probate because uh, it's statutory fee. I get uh, three, uh, you know, out of reasonable estate of uh, 1.5 to million, I get about uh, 30, $40,000. Uh, I don't like it. I don't enjoy it because any time that things that could be avoided, I would rather have created the trust for them, make sure they do not need the probate. Uh, I, I, that's why I participated in all these um, yeah. opportunities to talk to people, to explain the process and how it works and the necessity of it. We yeah. all... We all think that we are invincible and nothing's going to happen. We all procrastinate, so leave it until uh, next year or so uh, whatnot. Uh, but life happens, especially nowadays. I have so many uh, lost calls when there is nothing I can do or people, a person already at the hospital, not able to sign up. Yeah, yeah. And, and then one more thing I want to point out is <clears throat> Um, don't just uh, limit your thinking, whoever is watching us right now, that it's trust is only for a, a house, right? Can you explain more? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's every asset, 50,000 or more? Every asset. So basically here in California, if you own property for more than, uh, right now it's around 160,000, okay. uh, you go to probate, full-blown right. probate. 
So any property that you own should be tra uh, transferred, title should be transferred into the name of the trust. Uh, however, there are some, uh, of course, um, uh, exceptions. Usually we do not, uh, where accounts that are beneficiary designated, IRAs, uh, 401k, life insurance, so we usually keep it separate. However, whenever there are uh, minor children, I always recommend, for example, uh, life insurance to have a second beneficiary living trust just in case. So kids should tragedy occur. Kids don't have to wait until the age age of major, uh, 18 years old to receive money. And they don't need $1 million when they're 18 years old. So everything goes to the trust and then distribute it accordingly. So, so, if, so uh, what if someone has uh, liquid cash in a saving account or checking account, can they also list those under the trust for, for you know future protection if it's more than 50,000 or whatever the amount is? Yes, yes, it should go into the name of the trust because should something happen to the owner of that account, well, I have another case like that because when family created a living trust and they, they put the house into the trust, but they failed to put the name accounts that they own at the banks into the name of the living trust. And now we're back to probate Probably it's, exactly court. it's a relatively short procedure about it took us just half a year instead of two years, but still uh, children are waiting for to, to get their money. And yeah. I see there is a uh, there is a there is a question. So, so uh, uh, yeah, first question is what happens when a trustee wants to quit being a trustee? What happens when trustee? Yeah wants to quit being a trustee? Yes, uh, that's a very good question. Trustee is not obligated to be a trustee forever. If they feel that they're not competent, if they're busy, if they're sick, or simply, I just don't want to deal with it. Uh, it is sufficient, so there is a procedure, uh, they resign as being trustees, and that's why in my trust documents, I always ask people to nominate at least several um, several uh, positions. So number one, who you want to take care of you and your property. Uh, and if that person is not available or not, um, or doesn't want to do it, who's next? So at, yeah. least, at least three people and each and every trustee, you can give them a right to nominate somebody else, or you can petition court to nominate uh, a trustee. Or in my trust, uh, there is also such position as a trust protector. Uh, so uh, kind of person supervising everything. Um, uh, so we don't need to go to court. That trust protector can appoint the trustee. Um, uh, hold on, the questions. Uh... Hey, the trust is good also for protecting from any lawsuit. I'm not sure how broad the question is. <laughs> the, um, uh, the question was, uh, is the Hold on, hold on for a second. I'll try to redefine the question. Uh, in related to, to that specific uh, topic, trustee, right? What if the trustee that is nominated is not in capacity, but there is someone that has power of attorney over this person? Well, is that person take over no. this place? Or, okay. No, no, no. It's totally different. No, they they have not. They deal with trustees' property and issue, but they do not become trustees over somebody else's no so yeah so that's why you know uh once again whoever is listening right now why right? and most people are not specializing in that field it's very 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 important to learn that uh so thanks for that that, that tip basically right that nominate maybe first place second place and whatever in that capacity right and related to this question is the nomination of guardians for <clears throat> minor children I always look, you know, look at some trusts, and there is one person or who will become a guardian and the successor trustee. When minor kids are involved, I always recommend people appoint a guardian who will take care of health, education, churches, trips, so taking care of the child, and another person. Uh, taking care of finances so they can just in case you know uh, checks and balances control each other for the best interest of the child okay i have i see in in uh, in, in uh, chat there's there Maria, before questions. before just because okay. i have like in order so I'll, I'll control the flow of the questions so you can right. that. no you're good um, another question is does trust give you um um 
uh, decent legal protection or legal layer, uh, same as LLC, S Corp, or differently? Um, no, we think so, but no. Uh, when we create, uh, it depends on what kind of trust. If it's a revocable living trust, it has tiny level level of protection because uh, when uh, creators, for example, uh, see that property belongs to the trust, something I've seen it uh, firsthand. They say, "Oh, there's trust. We're not going to deal with it," and they just walk away because yeah. they don't know what it is, like many of us. Uh, but uh, legally, no, uh, it, it is still on your social security number. It is going towards trust. Technically, everything that you own belongs to you. Uh, <clears throat> the trust owns ultimately belongs to you because you're, it is revocable. You can cancel it. You can sell the property and pay the creators. So for example, in bankruptcy, it will not protect you. Uh, in a lawsuit, it will not protect you. It, it's just some layer because you have to go through certain procedures as creator to dissolve the trust and make um, your debt debtor to, 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 to pay. However, there are various types of trusts. Uh, it could be, uh, and for highest net worth clients, we create, uh, or older clients, we create an irrevocable trust. That means that you, you're separating yourself and this asset, we can create irrevocable tr trust for piece of land, for example, or apartment building or several houses that you know that your family will hold forever. You don't need uh, uh, everyday control over, over it. You don't want to sell it uh, shortly. And you give it right away to your beneficiaries in the future. And you assign a trustee who preferably not related to you, so you don't have control. And that way it is protected. Even IRS and bankruptcy courts um, don't take into account uh, that, uh, that type of property. There are certain rules for time, uh, look back period, et cetera, but it, it is possible. And uh, so, so often, so for example, for your uh, related, uh, often your clients uh, form LLCs to own the house. And then, uh, if there are multiple uh, LLCs and revocable living trust, I do not recommend transferring uh, interest of LLC to the revocable living trust while they're living. Because ultimately, then it goes back to the one owner, right? So the trust owns everything, and then the creator potentially can uh, go after everything. So uh, what, what we do, uh, very important for your clients, if they purchase uh, properties, income properties to, into the name of the LLC, ask them about operating agreements because people over, they don't think about it. They go, they save on the attorneys, they go to uh, California Secretary of State, a legal Zoom form LLC uh, and receive uh, a cookie cutter operating agreements. And those that I've reviewed so far, never talk about uh, what happens to the uh, in member interest if, uh, if, if member becomes incapacitated or passes away. It's vague. Then we go back to square one probate. Mm -hmm. So what I, I always, always talk to people about, to your clients about it, take a look at your operating agreement. What happens if you uh, become sick or if you pass away? Who inherits the... Uh, the property uh, or the, the, the uh, who continues management and especially when there's several uh, people involved uh, par partners you know something happens that part usually anytime partners in business involved uh, they last if something happens to one of the partners the other one lasts about six months supporting family then they fade away and um, your job as the um, you know, family, man, woman, uh, provider, protect your business interest for, for, for your kids. Yeah, one more question over here. Uh, yeah, I wanted to know, does the trust create any tax benefits? Does the trust, trust creates any tax benefits? Uh, mm, not in the short run, not immediately. As I told you, you're still on your social security number. 
but uh, especially if you're a married couple, there are huge tax uh, benefits because of step up in basis on the first death. Uh, and uh, yes, there are, there are tax uh, benefits uh, for especially married couple and even a single person where they can on their death restructure the trust and divide properties so you pay as least taxes as possible estate taxes remember right now it's estate uh, taxes 11.5 million so very few people uh have to worry about it however um you know with biden administration they're lowering it uh, uh we're expecting it to be either 5.5 or, or 3.5 million and what is 3.5 million here in uh, california especially south of ventura it's basically a, a one and a half house some savings that's it and for everything over you have to pay estate taxes that's why yes for these purposes for estate taxes uh, trust helps Okay, yes. Yeah, Can you speak up? Yeah, um, so I guess my question is um, if someone doesn't have a trust, but let's say they have someone like a power of attorney um, on like a signer, a signee, whatever, on their bank account, and let's say that person is also on the title, what happens if the main account holder passes away? So it's still going to probate if the person. There's another person on the title, and if the other person is also has power over the bank account. Okay, so uh, power of attorney uh, <clears throat> makes sense while person is living but incapacitated. As soon as person passes away, power of attorney doesn't work. Uh, if there are some, you know, people think they're smart and transfer a uh, uh, title to, uh, let's say, a, Usually, usually people think that they will um, avoid the um, <coughs> by including, let's say, child in uh, on the title. I'm against it because I want you as a person who made all the money, who earned this property with hard work, you know, throughout your life. Now you're giving away your uh, the power, uh, even best relationship with the family. Uh, yes, you will avoid probate. Child will receive 100% if you pass away. But while you're living, we don't know what's going to happen. That child can be, be involved in a car accident and uh, or have his or her own creditors going after him or her. That's, that 50% of the house becomes immediately available to creditors. And um, uh, there is no need for that. And also, if you include one of the children on the title and you have three other kids, uh, you, you would think, uh, you know, our intention is, okay, if I pass away, my other, uh, my, uh, this child will give, every, you know, share with others. There is no guarantee. There is no way we can make sure that it will happen. So, and uh, your, ch your child's uh, spouses, you know, the conversations they might have, if they get a divorce, they can have uh, potentially uh, interest in half of uh, a quarter of your property. Of course, it's separate, but it, potentially there is always uh, drama, there is always conflict and uncertainty. What I'm looking for after is to make sure for the peace of mind. So no questions even arise for some wrongdoing. I hope I answered the question. And for the accounts, yes, if you if on your checking saving account, you go to the bank and uh, and say, hey, um, uh, sign the TOD or POD transfer on death or pay on death forms within the bank. Yes, you can uh, you can potentially avoid the probate. Uh, as a listing agent, uh, when you're dealing with a trust, uh, you know, then let's say there's for whatever reason, there's multiple people that have to sign the listing contract. Are there any uh, information or any uh, heads up that you can give us when you are dealing with the trust on either side or any issues that you've seen arise from uh, any complications in ESCO or in real estate side? Uh, the, yes, uh, the only complication uh, can arise if your ESCO ha has no knowledge about trusts. I see that. Uh, and, uh, and lenders as well. For example, I, 
do you deal with refinancing at all not not your uh, yeah 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 with the refine yeah okay so uh during refinancing what i witness is that lenders or escrow companies they have no clue you know if it doesn't hit the check marks the dots sure. they don't know what's going on what do you do sure. that's why that's why they take a uh, transfer title from uh mary and alex as trustees to mary and alex then refinance and then they forget to put the house back into the name of the trust yes that's yeah. a huge problem uh because uh, now it's and people don't know about it your clients do not know about it and they forget uh, to or to to oversee it and they forget to, to instruct the escrow to put it back so uh also uh, i would suggest <coughs> you know all the professionals all the you know vendors you're working with that that's not necessary to transfer title of the trust to for refinancing and for the sale you basically just need to make sure that these are the people uh, trustees, uh, because as a as a trustees of the trust, you can uh, if it's a revocable trust, you can sell, refinance, do whatever you need as a regular person. You just have the title trustee, and uh, they can sign documents and uh, check. Uh, usually, you I would suggest uh, uh, that they bring certificate of trust, uh, some documents that you have in your. Um, paperwork guaranteeing that they are indeed uh, the trust is valid and they created the trust we have two, two more quick questions because <clears throat> our time is uh is running out uh from matt on the chat uh the tpa act tenant protection act sets limitations for corporations and REITs on rent increases etc does these limitations extend to living trusts not sure rent uh, it's uh, it does not matter regulations for rent whoever is the owner of the property has to abide by regulations so i i've never had this issue raised for me before so i'm sure that you have to comply as well um question from from alan can a trust own a property vested in a single entity llc i think you kind of mentioned that yes yes so what what we do so yeah. But the LLC doc, if LLC owns the house, then we transfer LLC interest to the trust. Uh, you know, we, we basically we do the assignment of, uh, within LLC document. And so now trust owns the LLC and LLC owns the house. That's kind of two levels of protection. But again, not when multiple properties involved. Right. That we try to uh, um, um, uh, to manage with operating a proper, well written operating agreement where we say, should something happen to us, it doesn't go to probate, then it goes to the trust. Um, Maria, how about you uh, on the chat for uh, everybody? Put your information, um, <clears throat> your email, phone number, the best way to reach out to you directly. Um, and guys, if you're your clients, if you have your own trusts and they're not, they're not up to date or you want to create one, <clears throat> I have one for many years and I recommend to structure yourself properly, right? It doesn't matter how many assets you have or what you have. It doesn't matter. It's about thinking about the future and then keep, keep it up, right? Build yourself toward the future, whatever future you want to build yourself, etc. Uh, and get educated by Maria uh you know she's here for a reason and she's you know she's she's an expert and she also makes it like it sound very uh she, she can simplify the process as well right because that's what's important you really understand what you're uh stepping into maria and uh also uh you guys are a professional so i do work with my centers of influence so each and every one of you becomes my center of influence if you need uh, your own uh, trust documents, I have special discounts uh, for my people. And, sure. and also your clients always remain your clients. So I, I treat them as your people and uh, you know I deal with them and give them back to you. I never steal people, <laughs> client, people's clients. Yeah, so uh, Maria uh, Primushko, attorney, um mvp law group estate planning thank you so much for your time stay on the call if you if you wish so and put your information in the chat uh, and once again guys if you have more questions reach out to me directly and she's gonna 
and no, please no. always mention um, hashtag Keller Williams. Yes, hashtag. Yes, that's yeah, <laughs> right. Absolutely, Maria. Okay, thank you. Uh, pleasure yeah, speaking. Thank you. That, that was that was, that was uh, you know, as always. And, and and you know, if you if you guys were on the on the on the class, right? That today was more of a diving deeper to more technical questions and more speciality that we need in our level. We need to know, right? So, Maria, thanks again. Uh, <clears throat> let's go to our TLs. Uh, quick highlights of upcoming trainings, uh, Holly, Stephanie. Um, we have a lot of stuff happening. Uh, our calendars, by the way, right? All of you have access to them all the time. Uh, we only published the, uh, the last quarter of the year. Go to your resources website, which office you're with. Um, and also uh, consists of uh, the South Bay office too. So it's four offices, uh, which is training calendar on, on, on steroids. Um, what do you want to mention, um, Stephanie? I don't see Holly yet. I'm here. Oh, oh, you're hiding on the side. Hello. <laughs> go ahead, Steph. You go first. All right. Thanks, Holly. Um, thanks, Benny. Okay. So as you can see, well, that's cybersecurity. So uh, <laughs> as you can see, we have a truckload of things on our calendar. So it's action packed for sure. So definitely want to First, speak to the business planning workshop that we have. I know many will probably go into that a little bit uh, uh, more in more detail, but that's on October 28th, right? It's it, what's it, what is the time on it again? But it's business planning part one. So I highly recommend let's go. that. Stephanie, let, let, let's go through the slides just to highlight. I think I think they're all there. So we wanted to, to paddle back. So um, Rich mentioned the cybersecurity class today. Right, 4 p.m. <clears throat> over Zoom. Yes. Um, they're definitely a good session. And, and it, it, you probably, if you don't know, it's it's an increasing issue. I mean, cyber, uh, cyber crime uh, is increasing every year. And I don't know the, the percentages, but uh, if I had to guess, it's probably doubled uh, in the years of pandemic because everything went virtual, right? You had to go work through emails. You had to go through the web platforms. You can go to the offices if it's a, if it's a escrow title, et cetera, or counties. So more and more uh, issues arise. So reach to that 4 p.m. Um, Stephanie, masterminds, Holly, tomorrow? Yeah, so we have the masterminds. I mean, look at it. It's all about the luxury. So we have Rachel Labor, we have Lena, Jordan Davies, Lindsay, and Robin Nikki Friedman. So definitely, you know, uh, hosted by many so it is tomorrow at two o'clock so definitely check in and see what they do to you know just sell at, at, at a high high level yeah i mean i, I don't have the stats really but if, if i had to um uh, add on all the volume that those guys sold it's just, just mind-blowing so they're going to hang out with us tomorrow and uh, uh if you see that your office's name it means that they, they most likely going to be there in person too uh, and over Zoom as well. So uh, I'll be here physically in Calabar in Westside. Uh, Stephanie uh, with Le Lena over here, and Stephanie with uh, some of the agents over there in uh, in Long Beach, in uh, Calabasas. Sorry, and uh, Holly in Long Beach with Lindsay. So uh, looking forward to have some fun tomorrow at two o'clock sharp. We'll start the session. Um, Holly, are you guys hosting this month? Book club. No, I'm not sure who's hosting it, but we're still going to have something. Yeah. Okay. Great. Calabasas, but we're still going to have something here in our offices. We're going to have wine, maybe a little bit of food. Make sure you guys tune into this because it's a great opportunity and easy way to be able to consume a book a month. That's really going to help your growth in your business. It's not a wasted use of time. The more people that come and participate, the better. So come talk to me. If you don't have a book, if you're looking for more information, talk to me and Stephanie I'm sure what, what you've got got going on in Calabasas right yeah we are going to have uh tacos and margaritas oh good okay. okay. and I'm sure you know a shot or two no I'm kidding um no, we're not. yeah no we're not so the success <laughs> principles live in Calabasas and then obviously live uh in coastal as well what are you doing Manny uh virtual <laughs> 
Well, well, actually, no, you're going to come to Calabasas to have a shot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, whatever. <laughs> all right, all right, good stuff. And then uh, Rich mentioned uh, the two sessions with, it's going to be the exact, you know, class, but two times because it's a lot to go over, um, you know, with uh, Jeffrey Khan, Khan, our attorney. If you don't know Jeff, he's uh, part of the dozen or so attorneys on a state level that revising those contracts. And uh, Erica, thanks for the uh, virtual effects over here. Really that's, like that. that's, that's, so yeah, it's, it's, it's 100% uh, fit the, uh, whatever is coming. It's like, I can see the end, but it's never ends. Um, so uh, the two sessions are gonna be on, on the, this month from the 26th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then November 11th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. with Jeff um, over Zoom, of course. So stay tuned for that. Um, you mentioned, uh, Stephanie, thank you for that. There's uh, some revisions because we're going to add in more stuff. This is going to be the most mind-blowing uh, two parts uh, business planning seminar we're going to have this year. Uh, the 28th, right, um, is going to be the, the first part. It's a Thursday, 1 to actually 3.20 p.m. because we had to add another session about uh, how to flip properties and, and access the money in the, the, the team right away. Uh, it's exclusive only to my offices, and I'm going to launch and announce that in that specific day. Uh, so if you always wanted to, you know, I have, I see those fix and flips and whatever, but I don't know, I don't have the money. I don't have access to money. I don't know the, the vendors. I don't know the, the, the licensed contractor that is reliable. I don't know if, you know, the person going to give me to release the property. Now you have access for this, okay? And um, you're going to make way more money as also an investor. So we'll go over that, but we have tons of uh, good content between uh, business uh, principles, uh, how to incorporate yourself. So our CPA is going to give tons of information. Uh, we we'll talk about cash flow properties. We'll talk about ADUs, uh, social media marketing. Uh, we we'll talk about we'll talk about the, the Prop SB9. That's the uh, the change to the R1 zoning in California. We'll talk about syndications and about crypto and real estate. So that's the 28th and the 17th. Get ready for that. Uh, Stephanie, you're hosting uh, the first in so all of our offices will host in person only uh, ethics class um, that will be uh, it's mandatory. So if, if you're about to expire, that's the one that you, you have to take. And uh, Stephanie is hosting the first one that's going to be uh, available only to the Calabasas and Westside agents in person. Stephanie? Yeah, so make sure that you're here on November 1st. And if you don't know, if you uh, are required because remember this the mandatory ethics class is every other year right so you want to go you can go on to sra or whatever board or ju just check to make sure if you need it or not i don't need mine this year me neither so i'm so excited <laughs> but anyway for the rest of you come in re you have to rsv rsvp and eventbrite went out so you need to we need to let you guys know we need to know if you guys are coming or not so we know how many seats to put up but it's definitely uh yes yeah, so November 1st at 2, from 2 to 5, yes. then happy hour. Yeah, and then okay. the next session will take place uh, uh, also in Long Beach and South Bay offices. So stay tuned. <clears throat> We're going to, you know, bring it to your, to, your, to your offices as well. So no worry about that. Uh, quick, uh, 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 more, more like virtual effects, West at Fall mm -hmm. festivities. We have today the chili cook-off over here, and we have the October 27th, 4 p.m. Happy hour, uh, custom party, come dress up. Uh, I won't tell you what I'm dressing up for. Mm -hmm. And then Coastal, uh, we're gonna have the chili cook-off the, after the team meeting and the contest on the 27th and the 28th, uh, 6 p.m. They're gonna have a happy hour as well. And the Calabasas uh, cook-off is next week on the 20th. And uh, the at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, after the team meeting. I'm a birthday. And, and having karaoke too. Okay, karaoke too. And the 27th, they're going to have the uh, custom party uh, happy hour. I think that's when the karaoke is going to take place. 27th. Yeah, that's when the karaoke will be. Okay, so uh, we, we'll give you more information about that. I know it's a, uh, the, uh, 11 o'clock. Stay a bit more. We have a few more. Just uh, the price is right. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, <laughs> let, let's guess if you know, if you can tag the prices. But before, we have a special promo. Holly? 
Yeah, many. Can you allow me to share my screen? It says it's still disabled. Um, so we let me know when that's ready. Um, Go for it. Awesome. Cool. So you guys, we have something really special. I know we always play the prices right, which is fun, but we have somebody in coastal that actually did play the prices right. And yeah, cool. So I've got a little video to share with you guys here. Go, Mario. That's cute. Hang on one second. Let's make it bigger. Full screen. Come on. Here we go. Are you guys ready? Mario Mitchell, come on. Oh, 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 oh. Right, Mario. Sure. <laughs> Crafted from leather and suede. This perfect birch collection. Oh, good stuff, Mario. I'm so jealous. <laughs> One pair of Espadrilles. $2,300. Uh, Mario. $2,301. Drew. $2,301. <laughs> sort of price. $2,878. Mario. <laughs> That's amazing. Thanks, honey. Mario, oh, nice job. Right there, buddy. Yeah, for sure, you guys. Real quick, you just got to watch the end. I don't know if you guys watched the episode, but Mario did win the whole thing. $24,281. That's the copper walk right there. <laughs> but anyways, you guys, we just wanted to share that with you. If you didn't watch it, you can watch it on Paramount Plus. I know you, so you guys are asking, but Mario, congrats. We won't give you a hard time about your putting skills, but uh, congrats on winning the whole thing at the end. And we wish you could all uh, take us all with, to Switzerland with you. I know that was one of your rewards that you won. So congrats. <laughs> That's awesome, Mario. I, I mean, he's on the call, so you know, you can, can jump in. Uh, super cool. You know, you always hear about those people that won something and He's one of them. Uh, okay, so so um, let's see if you guys can get you know get the price right, right? Uh, that's a, a, one of our west side listings, Beverly Hills, uh, two two three two bed three bath a condo, two, just over two thousand square feet. Sold for how much? Put in the chat. Throw. Two point eight. Two point eight. No, one point. One point eight. Two point eight. Two point one. Oh, I saw the chat. Let's see what's going on over there. One eight. Two five, North Switzerland. Two nine, two five, one seven five, one seven five. Good stuff, good stuff. One six. Okay, let's see. Like, um, so that was even. <coughs> good job, guys. One six sixty. Good job. Very close, very close. Even. Um, good job over at the West Side <coughs> office. And let's see out of the Calabasas. Of it. This is actually coming soon. Okay, so it's on the MLS right now. It's coming soon. Granada Hills. What can you buy in Granada, in Granada Hills for uh, four uh, four bed, two bath for twenty six hundred square feet? How much? Uh, how much you need to, to put? Two and five. Two and five. One two one one. Two point five. Two. Okay. Okay. This is a new house. Yeah, it, uh, it's probably a, a remodeled house. I don't think it's the construction. 950 to seven. Okay, so let's see. Coming soon out of Calabasas office for Denise. One and a half. Woo. Oh, Lester, close. One six. Uh, yeah, Lester was close. One six. Good job. 1499 by Denise Marks. Okay, Granada. If you have buyers, guys, or put like 2.7 or whatever, you know, that's a good deal right there. Get your buyers in. Find Denise, Denise in the Calabasas office. And let's see, sold out of the coastal office in Cyprus. Uh, what can you buy in Cyprus, uh, which is four bed, three bath, 2,800 square feet? 1.2. One, two. 900. 900. <clears throat> let's see the chat. Um, 980, 19, 975, 990. So you only guys are like around the, the nine something. Just run the one, yeah, 105, one dollar. <laughs> they go on there, okay, yeah, thanks. One dollar, okay. So, uh, Calabasas that was 
the Falcons wow. for wow. 1 million 50. Good job, Boa Calabasas. Good job, guy. Where we did it. Oh, 105. Mario Mitchell. Oh, he knew. Mario Mitchell. <laughs> Give it to Mario. <laughs> But I, I, I see you run around the uh, the block. Um, good job, Mario. So that was out of the the, uh, the Long Beach. And last one out of our South Bay office. South Bay office. Uh, Mario, I'm here. <laughs> Hold on for a second, Mario. I, I put you as a as a as a, uh, as a panelist. You can join join the, the Zoom. Um, Gordina, three plus. Three and two, 1738 square feet. Sold for how much, guys? 800. 900, 895. 1.1, 850, 825, 800. But it's nice to see like where you think the price is. Yeah, many. We got people over here that are saying like high eights. No, seven. High, high, high sevens. High sevens. Seven. Oh. The crowd over here, that's what they're saying. So let's see, Gardena. Sold for nine hundred thousand. <laughs> <by Derek Hirano. laughs> Ordina, right? I mean, you go back two years, do the math. It's probably a slightly different price for the portfolio. Um, all right, guys, that's all we have today. Thanks everybody for participating. Uh, thanks again for Maria. And if you're in West Side, enjoy some uh, chili cook-off. Bye, everybody. Woo. Thank you for your time, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you. See you.